Hey everybody, it's Rich at RM Auto Diag and today we're having a look at an E36 BMW. Uh, we've got the V-Pekka plugged in, uh, another requested video to see if it'd work on the OBD1 with the round plug. So we've got it sorted here now. Okay, so we've got the, um, the cap off the round plug under the bonnet. Just got a standard jumper from a 16 pin to the 20 pin BMW so we'll get that plugged in it'll only go in one place and then we'll just get the normal v packet dongle and we'll plug it in as well and we've got a light so hopefully we'll be successful and this will work so we'll go back in the car and see if it does anything right we'll get straight into the software I'm sure you know what's going on by now Give the older version 3 series does show an E36 and if we go for we'll go for the quick test see how long that takes press yes uh, the bottom of the screen there where you've just gone to 1720 I'll probably pause this and we'll come back when it comes on and we'll see how long it takes Uh, right, okay, so we're at 17.24, so about four minutes to get through the test. Uh, that's that's not terrible for OBD1, I don't think. Um, quite a lot of things, uh, modules to go through on these BMWs. So, um, so view the quick result, which tells us what modules have got faults, what modules it has, and which ones don't. And we can view the faults as well. So that gives us a list of faults. Uh, O2 sensors, you've got some key identification stuff. Wheel speed issues. Yeah, nothing nothing too interesting here. Um, airbag's gonna be because it doesn't have a standard steering wheel on it. Um, this this car is actually used as uh, just a just a drifting car. So I'm imagining some of these faults are, are in here for stuff that's been disconnected. So let's go back out. So we've got a quick delete there. Um, let's go into this and see what we can find. Right, read fault memory. And the same as, same as what it come up as before. So we can clear, let's clear it, make sure that works. Clearing works. Uh, activation. Quite a lot of activation here. Uh, let's see if I put that on the dash, the malfunction light. Nope, not by the looks of it. I think the rest will need to have it running for. Well, we'll try those tests. I'll probably just put on the screen somewhere and see if what what works. I'll try if it's running in a bit with the uh, fuel injectors and the vanos and things. And let's see if we can find a few things here. Maybe coolant, power supply, O2. O2 sensors, let's see what they do. So yeah, we've got some live data up there. I have had the car running for a bit. Uh, yeah, probably somewhere around 60 degrees, 12 volts. O2 sensors, that's just a bias voltage reading there, so all that seems to be good. Let's come back out. Let's try, see what's in the immobiliser side of it. See if there's anything good in there. So it's pretty quick for... Um, Especially for an OBD1, usual part numbers and stuff like that. 
Assault code memory with assault codes. And live data again. Let's, let's check a few. So, key detected, code not active, key status valid. So, all good things in there. Come back out on the main screen there. And we'll go into ABS, see what that says. This one's taking a little bit longer. It's pretty quick on the engine, it's pretty quick on the immobiliser. Overall, I don't think this is terrible, to be honest, for an OBD1 car. <clears throat> they were never that fast at communicating with anything, so... There we go, so identification. Tells us it's a Teves unit. Gives us the fault codes. Uh, we've got no activation on this, but we do have some live data. So that says. Yeah, I'll read something sensible. I say short of ground, so I don't know if our pedal's going to work. It's not showing on and off when I press the pedal, but there may be a fault here. So that's pretty well it. That in there. Uh, body electrics. Let's have a look in that. We do have component activation. Identification. Yeah, it says it's made by Delphi. Part numbers and stuff. There wasn't any fault codes in here. Component activation, interior lights, turn on interior lights for 30 seconds. Okay, that didn't seem to do a lot. What was this? Central locking. I guess that means locked, not blocked. Oh, it did work. So that seems to do something. Okay. What is this? Right, this is the blocked, which I'm assuming should be locked. Yeah, I think it's just because the uh, the only one working is the driver's door. Okay, that's going up and down. Uh, electric window. Uh, we'll do passenger side, hopefully you can see it. Open. That's broke, but it does work. Uh, right, we'll put that back up. That does work if the window actually is attached. So yeah, that seems to seems to do stuff in there. Airbag, just read read and clear in this one. I said that'll be there because this has had a steering wheel change. But as I say this car isn't on the road. It's only just used for a bit of hobby drifting. No fault code for what we got in here. Temperature sensor. Twenty three degrees, that's probably not too far away. Uh, heated rear window. Uh, button. On. Off. Yeah, so that works. Uh, turn this off for the noise. So that seems to have stuff working there in the um, heating and air conditioning stuff. Uh, we'll go in the instrument just as the last one here before we finish up. But uh, so far it seems seems not too bad for most functions. 
again, yeah, just normal fault codes. Identification, date manufacturer, nothing particularly interesting. Reset service indicator, okay. So, let's see if I can get you in shot here. So our service indicator is, what, well, it's in that orange bit there. Right, I'm going to click on reset, engine off, ignition on, see if it does it. Uh, automatic, what's that? It's that inspection. So, don't know if that's time or date, let's just try a few. Uh, doesn't seem to have done anything. Let's go distance. Yeah, look at that. It's changed it. Should we go oil service as well? We'll do the lot. So, yeah, that all seems to have worked there as well. So I think, um, in general, I think that's pretty successful on an older BMW. So E36, I think this is about an R edge. So that's 1997. Um, plenty of the uh, plenty of the actuator tests work. Uh, it's done the service reset. There's plenty of data. It's picked up the fault codes. It's it's reasonably quick for an OBD1. No issues there. Um, so I think that's a pretty good test. Um, so yeah, it does certainly on um, BMWs. It seems to be happy with OBD1 tests. So I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, as I say, it was requested by you guys, so it was done. So thanks for watching, and uh, come back for the next one. Cheers.